Hello there, everyone. Welcome to another Italian pronunciation video, this time for the aria Vergin Tutto Amor from the 24 Italian Aria Book, or the 26 Italian Aria Book, depending on which edition you have. We will explore the tips and tricks to help you sing your aria without accent, and also discuss the proper open and closed vowels and other non-phonetic things such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. Before we do that, please direct your attention to the description of this video below. You'll find links to my various websites, my Facebook fan page. Please give me a like and a visit if you have a moment. Also, if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe because it helps me out a great deal. Um, also, in the description box, you will see a link to the pronunciation dictionary on the RAI site. At this site, well, you can uh, type into a search engine, R-A-I-D-O-P, or follow the link below. Um, when you get to the site, you can type in any Italian word, and there's a playback button. Uh, and you can uh, hear it pronounced back to you by a native Italian speaker. It also has complete lines of text with each word. And you'll see phrasal doubling and assimilation in action. It's what I call non-phonetic Italian. If you're new to this, by the end of a couple of my videos, you should have a very firm grasp of what I'm talking about. Um, so what we will do first is uh, also in the description, you I've left you the, um, the text for the aria with the open vowels and all the non-phonetic things written out for you so you can follow along as we do this. So if you go down to the description box, find the little text, and as we do this, we can go through it together. Um, so what we'll do first is read it the whole lines, line by line, and then I'll break it down word by word. And when I break it down word by word, we will examine a lot of the mistakes that I have heard uh, that you can do and also some tricks to help you hone your Italian. Okay, so here we go. Here is the line by line. Vergin tutto amor, o madre di bontade, o madre pia, madre pia, ascolta dolce Maria, la voce del peccator, il pianto suo ti muova. Giungano a te i suoi lamenti, suo duol, suoi tristi accenti, senti pietoso quel tuo cor. O oh madre di bontade, vergin tutto amor. Okay, so it's a very short text. So now let's go through word by word. So the very first word has a closed E. So E's are your first non-phonetic um, non -phonetic vowel in Italian. They make two different sounds. Um, so the closed form is E and the open form is E. So the closed form is like E and he in English and the open is like a in head. But notice that it's higher in the palate, the Italian versus the, the English one, number one. And the second big characteristic difference is that there is no glide to the vowel, right? So if I do head, I slowly close my mouth and my jaw moves. If I say say, my jaw moves. So in Italian, the jaw stays, right? So a, a. So if I move, a, I have that glide, and that gives me away as a non-Italian speaker. Okay. Um, so the very first thing you do with the ve is v, right? So a. Then the r rolls, r. So when you roll an r. And the R has nothing to do with the vowel. So the other main thing in Italian is that vowels do not harmonize. Vowels remain pure. You've heard about pure vowels. Well, how do we make a pure vowel? By not harmonizing to anything. So in English, an R will influence, or a consonant will influence a vowel like this. Car, right? So 
if we were going to say ver uh, Virgin with a really uh, uh, strong American accent, you see all of that harmonization. The R is actually a vowel and it's down here and it bleeds in, right? So in Italian, none of that happens. V, Virgin, you see? So A, R, the, the A and the R have nothing to do with one another. I is always E. And in this case, G-I is G. So to make it hard in Italian, I would have to have an H. Now an H will be silent, but it would make it G. So G-H-I is G. G-I is G. Virgin. Okay, going on. Now we have U, right? It's a, U is always U. It's never anything else. So it's a phonetic vowel. O. Now, O is a non-phonetic vowel, meaning that it has two different sounds. It has a closed form and an open form. Um, in this case, it's the closed form, O, right? Uh, the open form is O, and you'll see that later on in the, um, in, in the aria, muova, one, two, three, four, five, six lines down, it's the last word, right? So the open O is with the broken circle, that's an IPA. Open E, um, I don't believe there's one open E in this. The E, uh, that would be with the rounded edges E, looks like a Greek E for IPA, right? So if it's closed E, oh, there is actually senti and accenti. If you look down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth line and a ninth line, they have an open E. So, so there's your open E and then how it's written, okay? So I'm very clear. Um, the, the phonetic, the, the closed E is phonetic, actually, it's just like the Times New Roman font, right? Um, so I'm only marking when things are open, right? So you, you can look. Now, the, the words that we tend to pronounce either strangely or we harmonize, I've underlined it to tell you that that is a closed vowel. We tend to open that, in, in, uh, especially Americans, right? So if I've underlined an O, that's to say, take extreme care to make sure that that vowel is pure and closed. Okay, so now we have the word tutto. We have two T's, right, in the middle. So now how do we do double T? So this is a hard consonant. So hard consonants double by stopping phonation, phonation right? So tutto. So how do exactly did I do that? Did I do two T's? Tutto. In speech, I may, but in singing, it's a little messy, right? So what we do is we go up to the T and then we don't say it. And we have a long vowel before. Tu and you see, I went up to the T and I didn't say it. Tutto. Now there's your double T, right? Now if I were to do two Ts, tutto, right? And also I did very a lot of air through the T. Right, so here's the other characteristic of an Italian T. It is a very strong consonant. However, it is very close to the voiced D. So all of our consonants, I don't know if you realize this, you might if you've had a diction class, all your consonants are in pairs of a voiced and an unvoiced. And what do I mean by that? Here's a T. A T is an unvoiced dental consonant. T, you see, so my vocal cords aren't engaged. Now, D, so if I said ta, and then I said da, the da and the ta are formed exactly the same way, except for the vocal cords are not engaged on the T. That makes it an unvoiced consonant, right? So in Italian, if I did the same unvoiced consonants as in English, it would give me away as having an accent. Two toe, and you see I said it with the very British T, and there's a lot of air. So the Italian T is more like do, do, tu, do. As if I went to a D, da, ta. You see, there's not that huge puff of air. It's just unvoiced. But it's as close to D as I can possibly get it. And then I make it T. Does that make sense? Da, ta. Do, Tu, tu, to, not tu, to. Okay, so there's your T. And now you have double T's. Next, um, 
Amor. So it's a closed O and it's a single M. So M's, N's, right? They double in L's by continuing phonation. They're the opposite of a hard consonant like a T, right? In this case, it's a single M, right? So often the mistake I hear is a double M. Amor. Did you see that? That was a double M. How did I make it a double M? And it's wrong. How did I make it wrong? By mmm. I phonate on the M. Amor. Wrong in this case. Amor. Right? Now, the word amore in the south, in certain dialects like Neapolitan, does indeed have the double M. Amore. Right? In the Neapolitan. Right? But not in. Uh, Northern Italian, the standard Italian for singing opera. It's a single M. Amor. Right? So, single M, how do I do it? Well, number one, I, I give most of the expression to the vowels. So, if I think, ao, and it's very generous and very flowing, ao, now, it feels exactly the same. I don't let that M phonate for just not even a second. Amor. You see how smooth and generous. Single M. Now, if I go M mm, for just a second, it's double M. Amor. See, double M. Wrong. And I hear that mistake. Now, final R rolls when it doesn't touch anything. So in this case, Amor. Okay, so rolled R. So now let's talk about R. When does R roll and when does it flip? Now, are there flipped R's? Let's see, can we find a flipped R? Well, say we use the full form of amore, right? Usually this word ends with an, an E and it's been cut off for the, po for the poetry, right? So this R would be surrounded by vowels and it flips like this. Amore, see? Re, re. That's our R. Now, if an R touches a consonant or ends a word, it rolls. So going back to the first word, the R touches a consonant. And that's all it takes. Virgin. And now that R has pitch. It has phonation. The actual pitch you sing should be sung through that R as you do it. Okay, so there's your R. Okay, now, if you notice in the next line, in your book, it's written madre with a single M, and I've written a double M. Now, why is that? Well, we, we have some non-phonetic Italian. We have what is called a phrasal doubling. And the phrasal doubling is caused by a monosyllable that's strong. So we have strong monosyllables and weak monosyllables. Now, the interjection O is a strong monosyllable. It causes the M to double. So it's the, the word O that has caused this M to double. So I would not say O madre, I would say O madre. You see? Double M. O madre. We already know how to do double M. We hold it in phonation. Notice that the R rolls and then the E is closed in this word. And also we have an A. Ah vowel. So the printed A in Italian is always A. Ah. No matter what position it is, it does not neutralize, right? If you think about the way we say things in English, we neutralize to A. Uh, and there is no A uh position in Italian. So we say America, right? It would be America, right? A, 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 A. Always A. Ah. Um, so now, D-I of is a weak monosyllable, so there's only one B. Now, there's a D-I with an accent. That means day. It's poetic. Nobody says D anymore in Italian for, for uh, day. It's giorno now. If you say buon di to somebody in Italy, they will laugh at you because it's like you're speaking Shakespearean kind of English going around town. Um, but this D-I is a weak monosyllable. So it's di bontade. So bontade. Now notice what happens to the N. 
So N's and M's and L's that touch consonants, they double internally in a word. Did you notice that, right? Bontade, right? It's one of the things I've never, I never hear anybody teach. And that's a thing when you hear somebody speak Italian or somebody who's really good at singing Italian, you'll hear those internal N's and L's double when they touch a consonant. Notice that the D is surrounded by vowels, so it is a single D. So often I will hear the mistake, bontade. You see, what did I do? I doubled the D. So doubling something that's not doubled is just as bad as not doubling something that is doubled in Italian. So the mistake, bontade, how do we get rid of it? Well, again, by making the A and the A very generous. Ai, ade. See, no stoppage. Okay, going on. We've already had o madre. Now, pia. So a lot of words with I that are semi-vowel, you have to memorize what the stress of the E is, right? So there are some words like G-I-A that are ja, right? And sometimes it has an accent, sometimes they don't. You have to just memorize things like Giacomo, the name, right? That I is just there to make the G soft. In this case, this is not pia, that kind of a semi-vowel. It's pia, right? So you could put an accent over that I to, to remind you that that I is long. Okay, going on. Ascolta. A, a. So the two A's remain pure A. A, a. We have to make sure we stay at the same place. Ascolta. Okay. Um, now, a couple other things that happen. We have a closed O. Notice that we have a double L. Again, the L touches the consonant T, so ascolta, if I did that in slow motion, right? Notice the L is so high in the palate. It's not down like an English L, like an American English especially, right? Ascolta, no, ascolta, right? It's beautiful, right? Same thing with dolce. So C-E is Che, right? C H E would be che. Che, che. Dolce, right? So there's one more thing if we back up to the word ascolta. When I speak, I can say a little bit of S on the first syllable like this. Ascolta. See, it's on the first syllable. Ascolta. But when I sing, and I had two notes, it's messy to put the S on that first one. So if you listen to yourself, record yourself, the first note should be ASCOLTA. The, the S doesn't happen until the second note in singing. That's the difference, one of the differences between lyric diction and spoken Italian. Okay, going on. Uh, the word MARIA for the Virgin Mary, right, gets doubled, as does God. Dio, or God's day, or day, right? So those words double. All, all of the things that when you, when you start getting holy, they double, right? There's no reason other than it's just expressive. All the other doubling in Italian has to do with what follows what. So if something follows a strong monosyllable, then it doubles. But this Maria doubles. Now, you, you can find documentation on this in Evelina Colorni's Singer's Italian, where she lists, not only she lists all of the monosyllables that cause phrasal doubling, she lists uh, words that double, polysyllable words that double, like dove and contra. It's like four, four pages from the end. It's that little green book you might have had in diction called Singer's Italian by Evelina Colorni. I've also done a video on that, and I've linked to the video in the description, so you can check it out if you want to know more about phrasal doubling in non-phonetic Italian. Um, I've also done another video on N assimilation. I can also link to that. So um, my series of videos is all about the the little, uh, you know, in be reading in between the lines in Italian, all of the unwritten rules of Italian. So let's go on. L-A-La. 
is a weak monosyllable, so there's no double V. The, the definite article, la. Uh, voce, C-E again is che, and the O is closed. Voce. Uh, D-E-L, del. E, el, del. So I can do just the vowel, the last L, and then the D. You can practice that way. Peccator, sinner, right? So peccator. So double C, the double K sound actually is a hard C, is done the same way as double T. I go up to it and I don't say it. Peccator. And again, the, the expressiveness of a double consonant doesn't come from the force of the consonant, but the force of the space. It's the space that does it. Peccator. You see? I don't go any harder on those consonants. Um, notice that there is not one uh, open vowel in this word. And you can practice, you can do what I, uh, when you have three vowels in a word, just practice the vowels and you can hear or feel if your vowels are pure. A, A, O. And then you can do legato. A, A, O. Right? When you go legato, you have to not glide. You don't want A, A, O. E -o. Peccator. And you see, you can go by the feeling or you can go by the sound, whatever works for you. I-L is il, right? And in this case, we're going to go up to a consonant, so it's going to be il pianto. Il pianto. Notice that we have two consonants that touch you have an N and an L, they touch consonants. So the N doubles and the L doubles. Um, now here's an example in pianto of a semi-vowel. The I becomes just a Y, right? So it's just there to make that glide. Pianto. Now, if you're told to do a Y and you do a, an American English Y, it'll be too low in your palate. Right? So you have to think about a Y as starting from the E position. Okay, So if you think about the way uh, an American would say yellow, the color yellow, it's down there, right? Yellow. An Italian would say yellow, yellow, from an E, you see? So when you start, if you were to say, say you cheated on the, on the semivolume, you actually did an E, right? You're not going to say it this way, but Pianto. Start from that position now and make the eye silent. Pianto. Now you're in the perfect position. Okay? So that's another way you can hone your Italian. Right? You're bringing it higher into your palate. Uh, suo. See? So here's another one. You have to memorize that the U is the stress. Suo. And the O is the weaker part of it, but both of those vowels are formed completely. T I T. T is a weak monosyllable. Muova. So U, A, A are your vowels, and you must get all of them, right? You, you cannot compromise. U, A, A. Muova. Everything. Okay, notice single V. I would hear muova. If I go v, it's double V. Muova, wrong, right? Muova. You don't want that V stopping phonation for just a second. Okay, so now, next we have what is an N assimilation. And again, I will link to my N assimilation video. Uh, but this one is jungano. So, what part of the tongue do I make? For the N before the Gano, right? It's the middle. Jungano. We do the same thing in English when we say bank, right? If you say the word bank, naturally we make it with the middle of the tongue, right? We don't make it with the tip of the tongue. We make it with the middle of the tongue, right? So there, I have a little IPA symbol there for the N assimilation. Notice that the, the N of the second N is made with the tip of the tongue. Jungano. Right? And I did I did the position of the tongue, right? So first it is jungano, right? So the tip. Alright. Um, so here again we have a, 
a semi-vowel I, and it's just there to make this, the, the G soft. Um, the word a, meaning at or to, depending on the context, is a strong monosyllable. So notice that we say a te, right? And you might notice in the Nico Castell books, when if you've studied, well, every time he has the combination a te, he does open e, and he's using kind of like a La Scala type Italian. Uh, it depends on where you are, where you're singing in Italy, right? So if you're in, you're 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 up north, then you sing a te. But most of it, most of Italy, it will be a te with closed e. Uh, e is a weak monosyllable, right? Suoi, a e. It doesn't rhyme with boy. It's not suoi or soy, right? Suo, a, suoi. Right? Lamenti. It's not lamenti. Lamenti. Close D. Now, we already know about the N going into the T, so it's a double. Okay, so uh, suo, we've had. Dual is short for dualo, for pain, right? Suffering. So, most of the time when you see an O after the semivowel U, you will have an open O. See, notice the same thing, suoi, right? So open O. Tristi. We have to be very careful when we sing S to not sing it on the first syllable, as I've mentioned before, right? So speaking tristi, singing tristi. The S goes on the second note. Accenti. So we have an open E. A. We have a double E. Right? So again, I go up to it, I don't say it. A centi. Right? I exaggerated the space. But you see, you have um you you have uh, perfect control over when you say that double consonant now. And you can fit it into whatever time you need to make. Right? Now, the other mistake I hear all the time on double T's and double C's is that you're told to shorten the vowel before. So I get this, I get a Centi. See, this a is not really a, a a thing you can phonate on. So you can't sing a centi. You have to have a centi. You have to have a long upbeat, right? And in fact, the Italian sentence, all upbeats are long in an Italian sentence, and all endings are short, right? You think about an Italian sentence, an ammazzato compari tu riddu. See, the short is at the end, and the beginning is long. Going on, senti. So there's an N going into the T, open E. Pietoso, all closed, right? Single T. The mistake I hear is either double Z, so we have a voiced S, or I hear double T. So two mistakes, right? Pietoso. Pietoso, wrong. Pietoso, yeo, right? So the vowels are long. Or I hear pietoso, wrong. See, the Z is too, too double, right? Pieto, pietoso, or both, which would be horrible, right? Pietoso. So the vowels are generous. Quel. So now let's talk about the K sound in Italian. As the T sound, right? K, ka, ga. So I think about unvoiced, ka, voiced, G, ga. So if I go ga, 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 ka. See where ka is? It's not ka with air, right? So it's not quail. It's like saying guel. Quail. Okay? So you find the place where it is as um, as close to G as possible, and it becomes K. Tuo. Right? Tuo. Cor. You'll often see the modern version of this word, which is cuore. as U. And it's a U-O, and it's open O. Right? In this case, it's cor in the the E is cut off at the end. This is a truncated version. 
Okay. And then we've had these two lines already. O madre di bontade in virgin tutto amor. And they're, they're repeated at the end. All right, so now let's read through the whole thing and get the arc of the phrase. Now, if you notice in an Italian sentence, there are no internal accents. There's only one accent. There's only one gesture, right? So it would be wrong to go virgin tutto amor and overly accent each accent that's syllable. You want the flow of virgin tutto amor. It's like a circle that goes around and then makes a gesture, right? So if you think about a circle, virgin tutto amor, o madre di bontà. You see, it's like a wave crashing on the beach. All right, so here we go. We're going to do the whole thing. Virgin tutto amor, o madre di bontade, o madre pia, madre pia, ascolta dolce Maria, la voce del peccator, il pianto suo ti muova, giungono a te i suoi lamenti, suo duol, Suoi tristi accenti, senti pietoso quel tuo cor, o madre di bontade, vergin tutto amor. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Please give me a like. And as always, we'll see you at the opera.